Um, yes, my name is Linda Ikechko, and um, I'm a developer advocate at Small Step Labs. I live in Lagos, Nigeria. Well, um, I say I live in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah, that's where my apartment is, but I am a digital nomad, so I kind of spend a lot of time traveling. I flew in here from Amsterdam, so um, I live in a lot of places, but like my home base is Lagos, Nigeria, so I go back there when I'm tired of traveling. Um, and uh, today I'll be talking about how to use um, digital certificates in your local environment, why you should care about them. Now, um, deaf broad parity is a fundamental principle of software engineering, um, which persuades that um, development, staging, and production are kept um, as similar as possible to avoid encountering undetected bugs because when there is no um, dev prod parity, you can run into bugs that might occur in one environment but will not be detected and cannot be replicated in another um, environment. And then you have something like I have on my slide where a developer starts telling the um, PM that, oh boy, it works on my computer. I know why it's not working. <laughs> um, so bearing that in mind, if production websites run on HTTPS, then why isn't it that um, as developers, we also run a local development environment on HTTPS? Um, so for most um, operations, localhost does actually behave like HTTPS, but not all the time. And it's very evident in situations where you want to test specific browser features like secure cookies, or you want to use a custom host name for development, or you want to test um, third party libraries or APIs that require HTTPS. Now, to run your local environment on HTTPS, you need to provision a um, TLS certificate for it. And for the benefit of anybody here who may not know why um, a TLS certificate is needed, I'll just um, take a moment to talk about that. HTTPS is basically um, um, a secure extension of HTTP which is the communication protocol used to deliver web pages over the internet. Now, um, it's basically HTTP with an added layer of security provided by TLS certificates, which is the transport layer security protocol. So when you combine HTTP with a TLS certificate, you get HTTPS, so that while HTTP handles the transportation of data over the internet from a um, client to server or vice versa, TLS encrypts that data to ensure the security, which is what gives rise to HTTPS. Um, um, so there, um, to um, talk about there are other concepts that I would need to talk about to help us understand why um, TLS certificates are needed and how, why they're important and how they're used to enable data encryption. So when you enter a HTTPS URL into a browser, what happens is that the browser reaches out to um, the server where that website is hosted to perform something known as a TLS handshake. Now, the, um, the goal of this TLS handshake is to securely exchange a single or a symmetric cryptographic key which will be used by both parties to encrypt and decrypt data. And um, symmetric keys are used um, in cryptography. There are two types of keys. 
that um, symmetric key and asymmetric key. Now, symmetric keys are preferred for cryptographic um, encryption because they are faster to run. And since in the web, speed is everything, so um, they are preferable for encryption. But they are also riskier to exchange between two parties because there is no way to verify that um, only the intended recipient gets the key. Um, so for example, if I were to send the key to him, um, somebody else, while the key is in transit, could intercept or clone that key before it gets delivered. And um, with that key, they will be able to um, decrypt whatever messages I send through. And that's where as, um, asymmetric keys comes in to complement um, symmetric keys. And in asymmetric key, there is a public key and there is a private key. Now, I, um, in contrast to symmetric keys where a singular key is used for encryption and decryption in asymmetric keys, you have a public key and a private key. And the private key is never shared and is kept private um, to the point of origin or wherever it's created. And um, in this case, the private key is used for decryption while the public key is used for encryption. So whatever I encrypt with the public key can only be decrypted by the private key. So now if um, somebody from the audience wanted to share a symmetric key from, with me, I will find a way to send my public key to them and then they will be able to um, encrypt that key with my um, public key and only I will be able to decrypt it and see it. But um, even with that, um, in, there's, there's no guarantee that if I send out my public key, um, it can't be intercepted and you know something funny happens because for example, um, what if someone intercepts that public key in transit um, and then makes their own private key and their own public key and then sends their own public key to my intended recipient. Um, in that case, the interceptor will be able to encrypt messages for me and, um, sorry, the, my intended recipient gets that public key for the, um, that the interceptor sent and will be able to encrypt messages. But then the interceptor could decrypt it and change them and recrypt it and um, none of us would be wiser. And that's where um, TLS certificates and certificate authorities comes in. Now a, um, a TLS certificate is simply a, um, a file that specifies, binds a public key to an identity of a server and is signed by a certificate authority to attest that, that the public key contained in that certificate is indeed the public key of the web server. And a certificate authority is a third party trusted by both the server and the browser. So it basically acts like a, a guarantor or like a, um, um, a referee or like a reference or something. So now when you initiate a connection to a HTTP website, your web server, um, the browser nudges the web server to present its TLS certificate. And this certificate contains um, the public key of the web server. And the browser checks that this um, certificate has been signed by a trusted certificate authority. And when that is confirmed, it uses the public key contained in that certificate to encrypt and share a symmetric key, which will now be used by both parties for encryption. Um, so uh, yeah, that was a lot, but I just hope that it makes a bit of sense. I just had to give that background info to um, help us understand why we need TLS certificates. So getting to how to get a certificate for a local web environment. Um, so for websites that are um, publicly accessible on the internet, um, there are a couple of publicly trusted certificate authorities that can be used to get certificates like Less Encrypt. So um, how many people here um, know of Less Encrypt? Show of hands. 
yeah, that's nice. Um, and um, mo um, devices and browsers come pre-configured with this um, publicly trusted certificate authorities. So that's why um, they can be used for um, HTTPS. But the deal is that for internal websites that are not accessible through the internet, like your local environment, you can use this publicly verified CAs to issue certificates for them for a plethora of reasons. Um, it's just not possible because they are, um, they are, um, the, C, um, the CA needs to be able to assess the um, DNS of your web server and since it's not um, public on the internet, that becomes a bit difficult. And so that's why you would need to host um, a, your own local certificate authority. And um, a common practice is to use um, a tool like OpenSSL or um, Gatsby has these HTTPS flags that provisions a self-signed certificate, but that's not best practice because you would still run into um, errors like this. So what do we do? Um, in a nutshell, like I mentioned, you just have to, you will have to create our own local certificate authority, get a browser and an OS to trust the certificate authority, and then use that certificate authority to get a certificate for a web server, and then install the certificate on a local web server. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's actually um, can be done in um, less than five steps with the StepCA project. Um, StepCA is an open source tool maintained by the company I work for. It's an open source um, certificate authority for internal websites. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, StepCA is an open source certificate authority for internal networks or internal websites. So um, you can use it for whatever runs within your infrastructure that doesn't run on, um, it's not accessible via the internet or within your home labs. Um, so let me just show a demo of that. Now, because the time is short, I had to pre-record this demo and just outside because I won't have enough time to let the commands run. So I've just outlined the steps with screenshots and we'll just walk through them. If you want to use StepCA to provision certificate or, um, certificates for your local environments, the first step is to... Oh, Okay. Not sure why this keeps happening. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first step is to install the project, and you can do that if you're on a Mac with this command. And um, not to worry if you. Um, I will have my, the links to my slide or like a tutorial for this afterwards. So you can just follow at your own pace. And if you're not on a Mac device, you can just check out the documentation for all the um, installation commands. Next, we'll create and configure a local certificate authority with the project. And that's done by running this command step CA in it. Now, this is a screenshot of me running the command and it asks for like a few things. It asks you to name your CA, provide a DNS name or IP address where you would like to run the CA. And since this is for my um, local environment or like local host, I just gave that. And then it will ask for like a provisioner. Um, for step CA provisioners, are uh, um, 
a way to verify the identity of an entity requesting a certificate so that not just anybody would be able to request a certificate using your CA. And for that, there are different provisional cat um, categories and I just use my email address here. And then it will ask you for a password which will be used to verify your identity. So just enter a password and just keep that in mind. Now, when I run this, it creates a CA on a certificate authority on my device. And the next step is to install that CA's root certificate into my system trust store because as I mentioned earlier, that um, browsers and devices come pre-configured with trusted certificate authorities. And so for your for the CA that we've just created to be able to run, um, you know, work perfectly within our device, we need to get a device and a browser to trust it. And the way to do that is to um, install it into your system trust store. And we have a command for doing that, which, is this, and this is a, um, a screenshot of me running that command. After you've installed the CA into your system trust door, the next thing is to start the CA server and so that you'll now be able to use it to issue a certificate for a web server on your device. And um, it's quite it's uh, quite a straightforward com command. And I think this thing is just looking for attention. Okay. All right. Um, So I run the command to start my um, CA server and you will see the last part here where it says 7HTTPS on the um, IP address that we provided, that I provided earlier on. And now that it's running, I cannot use it to provision a TLS certificate for my um, local web server. And um, for that, I just created a simple Node.js server here, which I will use to show that. So within my Node.js project, I will run this command to um, use the CA that I now have trusted by my device and my um, browsers to provision a certificate and a private key for my local server. To do that, and two files are created, the server.crt file and the server.key file. And I'll just take those and um, put them into my server, which now tells this node server to use the certificate and private key for um, during the TLS handshake. Um, Normally, you would route this through an environment variable and git ignore that file. And now if I visit that URL on localhost, I should see that my web server is now running on HTTPS. Okay, I'm right on time. Um, yeah, that's the end of my demo, actually. If you want to learn more about the Step CA project, you can either check out uh, documentation or um, find the project on GitHub. And um, you can also use StepCA for Kubernetes, MySQL, whatever you run that's not um, accessible, that's internal and not accessible publicly on the internet. And um,
And if you want to follow this on your own time, I put up this um, tutorial on free code camp, so you can just follow it on um, your own time if that's of interest to you. And um, yeah, that's that. Thank you.